Hi. Uh, today we have Philip in this lovely, lovely afternoon uh, speaking to us about creating modular UIs for offline content. Thank you, Emanuele. Um, yeah, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Philip Comento. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I work at Endless, and uh, there I lead the desktop applications team. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and I'll give you some background first on uh, how it relates to Endless um, and the stuff that Jonathan talked about yesterday and Cosmo the day before yesterday. So a quick recap uh, at Endless. We want to bring computers to the next billion people who don't have one yet. Um, and one important thing to note is that the next billion people uh, may have um, not unreliable internet or no internet at all. And uh, that's a problem that we're trying to solve with our system. So I'm going to talk about some of the applications that we try to solve that with. and. Uh, then I'll get more technical and talk about how we build those. Um, right, so what do many of us do with our computers? Uh, at least speaking for myself, uh, you know, we educate ourselves with online resources such as Wikipedia. We read blogs for entertainment. And um, so a uh, blog post from one of the uh, Google Summer of Code students happened to be at the top of this when I took the screenshot for this talk. But uh, yeah, it was really interesting to see the intern talks uh, on, uh, on Friday at the end of the day and uh, you know, connect the actual people with all the blog posts that have been appearing on Planet Gnome. So um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody, any of the interns are in this room, but thank you for your uh, presentations. Another thing that we do is uh, look at cat pictures and we build GNOME. Uh, these are all things that require the internet or access to the internet. And uh, so what we're trying to do at Endless, we think it should be possible even without a reliable connection. Um, so building GNOME is an entirely another story, and I'm not going to address it at all in this presentation. I won't pretend to have a solution for that, how to build GNOME without internet. But all the other activities that I mentioned, are uh, they all are consuming content in one form or another. So um, that's uh, what I do. We build applications for people to consume content without access to the internet. Uh, and I'm going to present the tools that we uh, built in order to build those applications and give a peek inside the engine. Um, so here are some examples of uh, some of the apps that we built to uh, display offline content and, and guide users through it. Uh, some of them you already saw in the previous uh, talks uh, from Jonathan and, and Cosimo. Um, it's, these are all made with the tools uh, that we've developed, but uh, also, just as importantly, these are all GTK apps. Um, they look quite different from many of the GTK apps that we're used to. And uh, the tools have a bit more specific purpose than, uh, than a general purpose toolkit like GTK. So uh, for one thing, all these apps are quite similar. Uh, for another, they all uh, rely heavily on, on design. Um, and so in, when you're writing a normal GTK app, you uh, rely on the work that the uh, Adwaita theme authors have done for you to uh, determine how your app looks. And uh, here we have a very specific uh, um, you know, theme in mind for each app. So our, our tools are taking that in mind. And lastly, this may be a bit surprising, we aim to write apps without writing any code. The less code you have to write for each app, the more content you can write apps for. Um, so uh, what we've done is develop a set of modules, hence the title of the talk, Modular UIs. Uh, modules, building blocks. You can pick them and assemble them into an app using a declarative language. So I'm sure at this point, uh, some people are shaking their heads, uh, muttering things like, oh, those poor naive souls with their uh, declarative language. <laughs> but uh, this, this is a bit different. Uh, of course, writing a general purpose toolkit or a general purpose apps without writing code is kind of an unattainable goal because uh, code is what apps are made of. But it's, it is within reach if you limit the sort of app that you write, which is what we're doing here. 
All our apps do basically two things. They let you search through offline content and they guide you to browse through it. Um, yeah, more screenshots, which I showed on the uh, previous slide. Uh, so we've built a bunch of building blocks uh, that are geared towards these two activities. Um, they are modular, meaning that you can mix and match them uh, and you know combine components. You know, they're not specifically made for one app. Uh, they're different from widgets, which I will get to later in the talk. Um, we describe them in, in a JSON declarative format, which is built to be understandable by computers and, and other tools, so that we can, um, you know, we can use tools to read and write it. Currently, the only tool that we use to read and write it is uh, a preprocessor tool that allows us to write the declarative files themselves in a more human-readable format than JSON. Uh, but uh, you know, this is intentionally designed to be uh, writable by other tools. You know, for example, GUI designer tools, I put it in real small type because it doesn't exist yet. I mean, GUI designer tools do, but uh, the ones that deal with this format don't. Um, I'll give a little overview of some of the uh, uh, UI modules that we have. Um, so we start with a window. Uh, you know, there's really not much you can do with a window. It's, it's an empty window. I think we only have one module like this. Um, but you can add a number of pages. And I, I don't know if you can actually see that these are different colors. It's lo looking kind of washed out from here, but uh, <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, so I mean, at its, uh, at, its, at its most basic, an app consists of a number of pages, and the pager switches between them. It's kind of like GTK stack. Uh, we have several different kinds of pagers that, uh, that you can choose from. You know, for example, there's, there's a regular one, and there's a one with uh, parallax background scrolling, etc. cetera. Um, inside pages, you can put layouts. Uh, layouts are similar to GTK containers. Um, there's one actually quite interesting difference, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but so, yeah, we have a box layout, which is very similar to G GTK box. Uh, and in some cases, we just wrap a GTK widget uh, all together. Um, and then for the content itself, uh, so each, each unit of content is uh, represented as uh, you know, it's a record in our database, and it's represented as as what we call a card, which is these um, the smallest squares in the middle. So these these cards are also GTK widgets, and are dynam dynamically generated with uh, you know they show the title of the uh, uh, piece of content and maybe a synopsis or something uh, depends on the context. And uh, cards live inside an arrangement, and an arrangement is also like a GTK container, but it uh, you know, deals with dynamically generated child widgets instead of uh, ones that the uh, app author puts in. Um, and then there are also a bunch of uh, UI modules that fall into the assorted miscellaneous category, and uh, some that aren't even UI objects, but deal with more with uh, the model side of, uh, of the model view stuff. Um, so I hear you thinking, Show me some code. <laughs> I really wish I could see. Uh, I, it was mirrored on here, but I understand uh, from uh, earlier speakers that that's not possible. But we'll do it as best we can. Um, right. So uh, we write our UI modules in in GJS. Um, they are G objects with a couple of. Uh, um, yeah, we. I guess we use them somewhat differently than. G objects are often used. So, and on the right here is a sample of our uh, human readable YAML format. <laughs> and um, so, uh, type, for example, is the name of, uh, of the UI module. This, is, this doesn't do anything by itself, but this is a snippet of, uh, of a larger app description. So, type is the name of a UI module. Uh, for example, up the top, we've got layout.infinite scrolling. So, that's, uh, that's, uh, 
a layout. I said before, layouts are kind of like GTK containers. Uh, and this one implements infinite scrolling. It does kind of what it says on the tin. Um, we have properties, uh, and those are G-object properties. But of course, in our UI definition file, we treat all the properties as if they were construct only, because we don't write code. Um, yeah, I mean, so even uh, like orientation is uh, is an actual GTK property that's inherited from GTK orientable. But uh, yeah, we treat it in the UI definition file as if it can only be set once at the beginning. Um, we have slots. This is what I was talking about earlier uh, when I said that uh, things are not quite GTK containers. Modules can contain other modules, but they all have to fit in slots, and slots are always named. Um, so uh, for example, the infinite scrolling layout module has a slot named content, and that is basically the <laughs> The big, you know, it can contain one other module, and that is the contents of the scrolled window. Um, you know, some modules have uh, more than one slot, and they have different names. Um, so that's kind of what we use instead of GTK bin and GTK container. And then we have references. Uh, so, for example, the infinite scrolling layout. I mean, for infinite scrolling, uh, you know, you scroll down to the bottom of uh, of a scrolled window, and then you want to load more of whatever you put in the window. So it needs to know what it needs to load more of. And in this case, uh, it has a reference named lazy load, and that points to another module, which is not in this snippet, with an ID of search results. So that says, OK, when you get to the bottom, you load more search results. Um, and we have uh, styles as well. You can add CSS classes to modules. And I'll get to theming in a moment. Um, one thing that G-objects have, which we don't use in here, are signals. Uh, because no code, no signal handlers. Uh, so that's the structure of an application definition. Um, now we define the looks. So uh, we use CSS, because that's what GTK uses. And um, but of course, we uh, got this trick from Adweta, but uh, apparently none of the cool kids write CSS anymore. So we. Um, we do just like Adweta does and write SCSS instead. So for those who aren't familiar with SCSS, it's a um, sort of a CSS preprocessor uh, that lets you write stuff that is less annoying to write than CSS and compiles it down to actual CSS, which is what GTK consumes. Um, it's probably one of the most uh, popular tools to come out of web development. Um, so for our CSS, we uh, expose a number of things that theme writers can use as well. Uh, so for, if you, for simple customization, we expose a number of variables uh, that control the fonts and the colors in an app. If you just want to use the default, uh, you know, our default uh, theme. So this is how how you set variables in CSS or in SCSS, and then those are picked up and used throughout the rest of the CSS. So you can. A uh, couple of named colors, a couple of named fonts. Uh, and then, of course, you can write uh, the actual SCSS as well. And so uh, you know, the names of the modules, the things that corresponded to type here, they have automatically generated CSS classes. Um, and then yeah, you can also reference the styles that you added here. So for example, search results box up here about halfway down the top is uh, a CSS class, which you can reference in here. And it, see, it appears at the top of this snippet. Uh, and so you can make this either replace the default uh, theme that we have for apps, uh, or you can use SCSS to import the default theme and then add some augmentations like this to it. If you say, OK, I want it to look like the default, but I want to customize the colors. And I want the titles to be two points smaller, something like that. Um, <clears throat> so here's what an app consists of. Uh, the declarative app description in YAML compiled down to a more uh, machine-appropriate JSON format. 
We have the theme in SCSS, which compiles down to CSS, which GTK consumes. Um, we have things like images, so for the backgrounds, other assets, uh, and a logo or a word mark for the app. We put those in a G resource. We have the content. That's an entirely different story, uh, which uh, really requires its own talk. Uh, so I'm not really going to go into that. But in, in short, um, we have uh, all the content sort of stuck in a random access file. And then we, for indexing and for searching, we use uh, a Zapian database, which uh, we can search. Zapian is, I believe it's uh, uh, known as a, sort of a document retrieval uh, database. And so we use that for searching and indexing. With, and then the actual content lives in a separate file. Um, no code. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, you know I'm, I'm giving this presentation to a room that has you know maybe a couple of developers in it. So uh, <laughs> the idea is if you um, yeah, if you want to add components that we don't have in uh, you know in our in our library of components, then uh, you should be able to. You know, also add another UI module to uh, to your app and uh, ship that along with it. Um, we haven't actually done any of that yet because uh, you know if, if we uh, it's it's been closed up uh, closed yeah it, we're the only one who've written who's who's written apps for it so far. So if we want to add a component, we just add it to the framework. But um, yeah, it it. Uh, will be extensible, and then of course all this goes into a flat pack, and uh, it, right now it runs against the runtime that we have on Endless OS, but uh, we are planning to make a separate runtime for these offline content apps uh, to to run against. So um, I mentioned we were the only ones who had written these apps so far, but. Uh, this library is open source uh, as of like, about an hour ago. This is really exciting news. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this means uh, uh, now I'm really going to have to rush to make it actually consumable for everybody in this room and uh, hurry up on that documentation. But um, yeah, you can go there now. Endless M on GitHub EOS Knowledge Lib. Um, and let's see, how much time do I have? Because I can show a quick demo. More than 10 minutes, great, OK. All right, so um, this is an example of our uh, Prensa Libre app. Prensa Libre is a newspaper, so the foremost newspaper in Guatemala, I believe. Um, and so you might ask, offline content, newspaper, how does that work? But this one, uh, you know, part of our system can uh, uh, download updates uh, when the user has a connection. So you open it up, and you might not always get fre fresh news, but if you, uh, if you do have a connection at some point, then the news will refresh itself. Um, so yeah, these are the cards that I was talking about. Let's see. It's really hard to do this while twisting my uh, head uh, up to look at the screen. But um, so each, each one of these cards represents a, uh, you know, a, a document in our database. Um, you know, here are more cards. They're a slightly different style. Um, but yeah, that corresponds with different uh, different uh, yeah different parameters in the in the app description file. Um, so these things here, the I mean, they're they're not literal boxes, but like here you've got three cards next to each other. That's an arrangement. Uh, here you've got you know a big card and three small cards. That's a different arrangement. Those are defined in the uh, uh, in the app description file as well. Um, we've got 
a menu up here, and these are actually also cards, uh, except they don't look like cards, they look like links. But uh, so, you know, cards can not just not, not represent just documents, but also collections of documents. You know, we can browse through these categories and see, uh, you know, news about uh, you know, national news, international news, and then, you know, we click on them and we read the, uh, the news story. Um, so, and then let me figure out how to get a, uh, terminal up on here, but, uh, oh, it's not going on. Let's see. Okay, yeah. All right, so here's actually the code for what you just saw. And I guess this is, oh yeah, it is dragging. Um, so YAML is a lot nicer format to uh, read and write than you know JSON with endless curly braces. But um, yeah, we've got, like this is for example, the code for the menu. Um, it's got, you know, banner.app, that was the word mark for Prince of Libre that was uh, at the top left there. And, um, you know, we've got <laughs> a arrangement that's uh, named side by side, which showed the, uh, the, you know, the menu items side by side. And then the menu items themselves are card.title because they're only titles. Uh, and, you know, got properties here. Um, and then, you know, this line, I didn't talk about selections because I uh, didn't want to spend like uh, 20 minutes just talking about each of the components, but, uh, you know, selections, um, you know, they're, they're sort of the model to the, to the view that I'm showing. So this, this shows, says all sets filtered by sets that are featured. And, you know, those are the cards that get created and displayed in the menu. Uh, and so this whole thing for the entire newspaper app is about 250 lines, I believe. Oh, it's a little more. Okay, two, about 300 lines. Um, and um, yeah, I guess it's, it's debatable whether uh, writing a 300 line YAML file is, is code, but like I said, this is meant to be output by a GUI designer type thing as well. Um, Anyway, back to the presentation. Oh, on the wrong screen. You're kidding. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I think I have to drag it on this one. Maximize. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, so questions. <laughs> No question. Oh, Alberto. So uh, the last that last step uh, that you show, you showed up, it basically synchronizes content from somewhere else, right? Yeah. Uh, is the synchronization of the content also a facility within? I know you. I know it's not part of the talk, but I'm curious. Uh, is the synchronization part of the content management also? Um, a, um, a given thing for the app developer? Is that something he can count on? Um, what do you mean by given thing? So, uh, in the same way that I'm given this toolkit to mm -hmm. do content-driven app, uh, the uh, do I get 
pieces, the pieces of the infrastructure I need to uh, publish new content and the synchronization, is it done for me or do or is that logic that you have to add specifically for like, does, okay, the other way to ask the question is does every app that does synchronization with the content have to have its own logic given that there might be different sources or? Ah, okay, um, yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, that's a part of the system that is um, not really worked out yet how it's going to be exposed to app developers. So right now, uh, it can only synchronize the content from our servers. Um, but yeah, you, you don't have to provide your own code to do the synchronization. Um, and so, I mean, whether that's going to be uh, you know, something that you publish yourself, I, I don't know. I, I don't really have a good answer for that right now. But yeah. Um, so you showed this uh, YAML file, which outputs JSON and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and you also mentioned that. Uh, the idea is that a UI designer tool would like output the YAML file. No, so it would output the JSON file. Okay, so yeah. do you have a UI designer tool like that, or are you still writing it by hand? Or uh, we don't have that yet. Uh, of course, there's Glade, <laughs> and um, yeah, that that's one uh, option that we are thinking of. But uh, yeah, so the idea is to have a GUI designer tool that will output uh, JSON but we don't have it yet. Any other questions? No? Well, okay. thank you, Philip. I got two other things to show. Um, <laughs> one shameless plug. I'm organizing a uh, BOF session for GJS on Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons. I mentioned that we write all our stuff in GJS, so I'm actually uh, really quite interested in talking with other people who use GJS and uh, you know where should GJS go? Uh, how can we make it more attractive to all those people who use Node, for example? Uh, and then shameless plug too, if you want to work on this, here's where to go, jobs.lever.co slash endless. Thanks. Thanks.